Okay, you're not going to believe this, but he's done it again. I don't know who this Bruno Sutalo is, but he keeps selling my players. Yes, Miroslav Milanovic becomes not the second, not the third, but in fact the fourth player that the chairman has sold without me sanctioning it. At least this time I got to protest. I got all the way down to where I threatened to resign for my job. I actually did threaten it this time. And he said, well, you should probably leave then. And I had to backpedal rather quickly. We've sold him for around £10 million. He's worth potentially £58 million. He's only 21. We could have kept him for another two, three seasons. What do I care? This is the last season of the quest. We could have kept him for another six months. And he might have helped us in European competition. But we've lost another key player for us and i'm not sure where that leaves us because things have not been going well since the last episode i have replaced him with a loan signing this is damian pizarra valued potentially 25 million pounds himself he's on loan from hull i'm not sure he's quite to the same standard but i guess he's not a million miles off he's already played a league game and got an assist in that and he's already played a European game as well. And he came off the bench and was superb. Unfortunately, we lost that game that he came off the bench for in rather heartbreaking fashion. Having gone behind, we waited until the 71st minute when substitute Pizarro pounced on a chance. And then good pressing from Pizarro and a bit of composure to slide in. Ishek got us 2-1 up. But in stoppage time... We fell apart. They equalised in the 92nd minute and then went on to score a winner in the 94th. And with Milanovic having left the club just a few days earlier, I will admit the PC was just teetering on the window ledge on one further nudge from yours truly and I would have just sent it out of the window. We're not even top of the league at the moment, by the way. We've not played a huge amount of games since the Michelin match, because we've had a little mid-season break. But after that Michelin win, where we came from 2-0 down at half-time to win 4-2, we beat Hajduk 3-0, disappointing 1-1 draw with a rotated team against Slaven Belupo. We then lost 2-1 against Swiss outfit young boys in a game where I think we were good enough to have picked up a point. They were finalists in this competition last year. And they scored in the second half to win the game 2-1. That was a disappointment. Since then, we've beaten Rijeka in the league and played two friendlies before that 3-2 absolute heartbreaker against Valencia. Honestly, when we took the lead in the 82nd minute and Pizarro had been involved in both the goals, I thought, Milanovic, who? We've brought in a new hero. And then we lost 3-2. I was a little bit deflated. We've just taken on our old club Lokomotiva in the league. We won that game 3-1. Tonight we have our final Europa League league phase game against Bran from Norway. It's going to be a very tall order for us to qualify for the knockout rounds as of right. We're currently perched on 12 points. We could get as many as 15, potentially knocking both Arbe Salzburg and Sporting out of those automatic qualifying spots. But with Serva and Valencia both aiming to do the same, we're going to have to win. We're going to have to win big. And we're going to have to hope that other results go our way if we're going to qualify in that top eight. Now, of course, the transfer window is still open. We are turning down bids almost on a daily basis now for Petr Ishak. Every club in Europe is chancing their arm. Even clubs from non-league in England are putting in bids for him. So far, we've kept turning them down and the board haven't jumped in, but we fully expect that they could sell him from beneath us before the window shuts. Tonight, we're going to have a strike force that I really didn't envisage us playing when we started this season. We're going to have the Magic Man and Pizarro up front rather than Uso and Milanovic. We've got Torkilson playing for us in goal as well as we've had another stroke of bad luck. In one of our European games, Leopold Volstedt broke his arm in about the sixth minute. Maybe if he'd been in goal for the rest of that Valencia match, we might not have conceded two in stoppage time. He's going to be out for another three to five weeks. That's a little bit of a blow for us. Torkilson 
is not quite of the same level is worth £16,000 rather than north of £20 million. But he's going to have to do a job for us tonight because if we've got any chance of qualifying as of right, we need to beat Bran in Bergen. And we're underway. If we are searching for good news, there's not a lot of it, I will warn you. But now that we've kicked into January, we have at least been able to re-register our squad for the Europa League. Hence why we're able to play the Magic Man tonight. Camboala is on the bench and why Pizarro was able to be in the team when we took on Valencia. So for tonight, we have at least got three new players as part of our squad, even though we've lost Milanovic. We're a minute into this game. We didn't get a shot from that kickoff highlight, but we haven't managed to create an effort so far during the opening 10 minutes of the game. We would like to try and score a couple before half time here and just see where that leaves the league looking during the second half. You never know. Results could go our way and we might be able to spring a surprise. I thought we might have won a penalty there. A player went down in the box. It counted for nothing. And now our opponents have got a corner. They send it deep. Torkilson, untested, untried, a little bit unwanted, comes out, punches the ball, but it murks its way all the way through to Eric Backer. And Torkilson is helpless as he strikes an effort home. And at times in Football Manager, you feel like everything is going against you. Injuries, players leaving the club. And now we're a goal down away in Norway. Bit of work to do then, I guess, as Vidovic picks the ball up over on the left flank. He gets a return pass from our left back. Pizarro has an effort. It hits a defender, goes behind for a corner. That was a better bit of play from us. Ishek's going to send the corner in. He's gone near post. He's looked for Beckham Avia. He rises for the header. He can't win it. We've had three shots, four shots, two on target. They've only had one and they've scored from it. A bit of a familiar theme there for us. We've dropped down as low as 15th in the table. I think for the second half, we're going to have to get that table up on screen. Is there any danger that we won't even qualify for the playoffs if we lose this game? I'm starting to panic that there might be. I didn't look that far down the table when I was viewing it earlier. I was only looking up. Maybe that is my error because we are now 2-0 down in Bergen. And it's the same player. It's Eric Backer who storms in at the far post, thumps a header past Torkildsen, himself a Norwegian. And they're probably taunting him in his native tongue as they go 2-0 up. So water bottle thrown, both strikers substituted. I've had a little look at the league table. Even with this defeat, I think we'll be okay for the playoff. But we have dreams of potentially making it into an automatic qualifying spot. Well, those dreams have certainly gone now. We've nudged it up to an attacking mentality. We're asking the fullbacks to do a little bit more. We've also bought on Vincic and we're asking him to give the ball away at will in the center of the park. And he is duly delivered as Thomas Myra sends a ball through. Torkelson is tested once more and we look frail and we look vulnerable and we look like a team that is bereft of a little bit of confidence. Certainly in the dugout, that latest player sale has just made us query whether we can get anywhere near a final of European competition. We've been robbed of four players who would have been pretty important to us this season. I think we replaced the goalkeeper well, although Volstead has now broken his arm as Torkelson saves a penalty. But at centre-half, I think we really miss James Gomez, who the board sold, and certainly up front. Without Uso, we struggle for goals as Pilcic is on and already injured. I think we're going to have to make that change. So with no more strikers on the bench, we've had to bring Renier on and ask him to play up front. A poor guy never seems to get to be played in a position that he's familiar with. Vidovic has got the ball. He passes it back to Julian Joachim. And now he is going to send the ball forward for a brand side who have missed a penalty but are still looking for a third. The match stats are pretty even in terms of shots. 
That penalty means that they are streets ahead in terms of the XG. And they're coming forward once more. They've got the ball at the back, looking to try and unlock our defence again. They've gone all the way back to their goalkeeper. They've got Buotov crossing the halfway line. And Backer sends the ball through to his striker. He rifles it past our goalkeeper. Our central defenders offered him far too much space. We're on an attack mentality. I think we're going to have to take that down to positive. We are 3-0 down on the night. And we are looking hopeless. We're still perched in 15th place in the league. And we're starting to look at the clubs who we might have to have a playoff game against. It could be Brown once more. It could be Salzburg, Werder, Bremen. Lille would be difficult. Napoli would also be tough. I think Bode Glimpt would be a very tricky game. They've reached finals of European competitions themselves. So it looks like we're going to have the lottery of a playoff game again. But who are we going to get drawn against this time? And I guess we're going to find out the answer now as we go into the draw. We're going to kick it off. There's some teams in there. Well, I'm going to tempt fate and say we probably wouldn't mind playing. Maybe Applewell. Maybe Michelin again, although we were 2-0 down to them. Let's see who we end up getting. It's not going to be Lille. That's a good sign. It's not going to be Applewell or Servet either. Stuttgart would be one to avoid. And they've got an all-German clash with Werder Bremen. Bode Glimt is again not one that I would be keen on. And they've got Olympiakos. Fire and order still looming large. There they are. We don't really want to face them. Napoli have got them. That is a result. Slavia Prague beat us during the league phase. They've got Wolfsburg. Don't give us Bran. They've not given us Bran. Salzburg are out the draw as well. Michelander up, and that's the club that we've got. We did beat them 4-2 in the league phase, despite the fact that we were 2-0 down. I guess we know what episode we're coming back for. We're going to have a two-leg tie against the team from Denmark, and if we win it, well, then we could be reaching the last 16 of the Europa League for the first time in the quest.